Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to one of the most frequent consultation queries. How will be my married life? So when we are talking of married life here, we have to understand that it's criminal to judge married life by one or two planets, especially the biggest blunders which uh, we do in astrology is we take the house and the karaka and forget everything else, but it's not like this. For example, I get many mails where people tell me that my seventh lot is in the sixth, I'll have a terrible marriage, supposedly, or my Venus is in debility, or it's very badly afflicted, so I'll have a very bad married life, right? But my question to you is, what if those dashas do not come? So today what we will see is, uh, using the level of nakshatras, we will see if a person is, let's say, uh, getting married at 25, then we will analyze how the marriage will have ups and downs till the age of 75, all right? Uh, let's say the person lives till 75, or maybe the person lives more also by God's grace, but just as an example, because um, one planet or two planets do not decide everything. It's the whole horoscope, all right? So please do not make these blunders. So one planet is bad, so your entire married life is bad. I have people who have told me that uh, some astrologer told them that uh, they have Rahu in seventh and their married life will never be good. It, it, it is not like that. Right. Do not listen to all these uh, fake uh, fake things. So, married life is just like any other area of life. There can be ups and downs. And if things get extreme, then there could be divorce and dissension and all these things. If malefics come in the way of the, the during the dashas especially. And of course, if the overall chart is not harmonious, in that case, these things can happen. So, today we shall see how to judge that. And... One thing I would like to stress here is many times people, as I said now, there's another mistake which people do. They will go, they will take the year and they will add 25. Okay, so then they will say, okay, after 25, another 50 years, this can, uh, then these are the ups and downs. But it is very, very, very crucial that you also check the time periods from now till the person gets married. Why? Because if these 25 or 30 years till the person uh, is about to get married, the person has a good experience of these four houses, the second, fifth, ninth, and 11th. I have seen nine out of 10 times, the person's married life, even uh, even if it, is, is, it has more challenges, I mean, after 25, when the person actually gets married, then the person can reasonably cope up well. If the person has had, uh, good dashas till the person gets married. Why? Because from the childhood, the impressions of married life is there within the person, especially from the mother and father. So therefore, uh, it's very crucial uh, if you are parents that you uh, do not uh, fight like dogs uh, in front of your children because that will have a very negative impact on their life, all right? So you should check these dashas also. So second house is the family, uh, then the fifth house represents the feeling of children. The ninth house is the feeling of having seniors, having shelter. Yeah. And then eleventh house is good friends. All right. So if a person uh, has all these things till the person gets married, then the person has a very good conception of married life, and the person wants to stay committed to one spouse. But if the person has seen, um, I mean, not so nice things before. Uh, their marriage, then uh, it, it can happen that the person may feel that, oh, anyways, marriages are like this, all right? Now, I'm not generalizing, but I'm just trying to uh, let you think in a way which can help you make some nice predictions, all right? So, uh, now I will share my screen and, oops. There you go. The screen share is happening. Okay. Is it recording? Let me just check. Yes, it is. Okay. So, um, this is the horoscope of the person. This is the Lagna chart. And uh, this, uh, this is the boy was born. Uh, one of my elder brother's uh, son was born. Uh, I mean, friend's son, not his son. 
<laughs> so 16th uh, January this year he was born and uh, he, he had approached me for just a short consultation about marriage and all career and all so that is why I have taken this horoscope so now the thing is uh, this is the bhava chart all right and then you have the navamsha chart there so i'll just keep this bhava chart here okay so now which are the houses of marriage the second seventh and eleventh so if the planets are in these houses the dasha planets okay Mahadasha lord especially or if they are in the nakshatras of planets ruled by uh, the Lord, I mean, if uh, suppose, let me explain with an example. So here, uh, you check in the bhav chart. The lordships should be checked in the bhav chart. So here, uh, who is the lord of the second house? It is Mars. Okay, do not check the lagna chart. It's here. It's Jupiter, but it's not second house. Okay. And if you have doubts on bhav chart, which you will definitely have. Uh, Half of the people will ask me the same questions again and again. So please go and watch my bhav chart video because any doubts on bhav chart, I won't be answering in this video, unfortunately. Okay. So don't ask me how it is Pisces here and why it is Aries here. Okay. It's the same old questions again and again. So Mars is the second lord. So suppose a planet is there here in Aries or I mean in the second house or if a planet is in the nakshatra of mars okay so which nakshatra mars rules mars rules dhanishta nakshatra okay so suppose a planet is placed in dhanishta okay here dhanishta is in aquarius and uh, capricorn so suppose a planet is in dhanishta then this will also be good for marriage so who is the seventh lord seventh lord is sun so suppose a planet is in sun rule nakshatra which is uttar falgun then also it's good for marriage or the 11th house. Who is the 11th lord here? It's Jupiter. So if a planet is in Punar Vastu, for example, which is Jupiter's nakshatra, then also it is good. Or if it is in Sagittarius itself, also it is good. Now, um, which is the most difficult house for marriage? It is the 6th house, okay? So if a planet is in Cancer here, okay, in 6th house, because here it is the same uh, in the Lagna chart or in the Bhav chart. Unlike the second house where the lordships has changed, so here it is the same. Uh, sixth house is Cancer, and Moon is the sixth lord. So if a planet is in Cancer, or the worst case is if a planet is in Nakshatras ruled by the Moon. Okay, so for example, if some planet is there in Shravan, uh, Hasta, or Rohini, these three Nakshatras, then this can be very difficult. Okay. Now that's why I'm saying because typically uh, many people think that oh, Rohini Nakshatra is very good for marriage, but in this case it can lead to disaster. Okay, so don't go by stereotype uh, things. This Nakshatra is good for marriage, that Nakshatra is bad. You know, Shiva and Parvati got married in Uttar Falguni, so it will always be good. No, no, it's not like that. It, it might be good for them, but what about you, sir, madam? What about your horoscope? <laughs> okay. So now here Uttar Falguni is very good. Why? Because Uttar Falguni is lorded by the seventh lord. So if a planet is in Uttar Falguni, fantastic it is. Okay. Mind blowing. Just brilliant. All right. So now we check. Let's check the dashas first. So we see moon. Uh, moon is there. Okay. Moon dasha, uh, he was born because uh, the nakshatra was hasta. All right. So now uh, this is six lord in the seven but as i said uh, in the beginning years the person doesn't know what marriage is the person has seen the family primarily okay so the second fifth ninth and the eleventh that's very important so uh, what about these seven years first seven years um, not that great experience because it is a sixth house sixth house in the beginning can show coldness coldness means Oh, the family is not paying attention and all these things. You know, the person can be a bit desperate for attention. Uh, the sixth house is very prominent in the childhood for in the later phase of life. Okay, because the person may not get that attention, or even if the eighth or twelfth, then also this can happen. Okay, then we have Mars. Mars will start after seven years. So, Mars is fantastic. You see, he's the second lord. 
okay fantastic this is so the, he's also the ninth lord because scorpio is here in the uh, ninth house of the bhav chart do not check the lagna check the bhav chart so he is ruling uh, two of these houses which i had mentioned to you earlier if you remember 2 5 9 and 11 these four houses so so that means he will become much 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 more happier uh, from the age of uh, 7 to uh, 17 almost okay so this is this is very important uh, sorry 7 to 15 because mars is 7 years only so uh, till the time he's 14, 15, he will have a great time. Okay. Now then from 15, his Rahu will start. All right. So what about Rahu? Rahu's rules are very specific. So Rahu's uh, placement you check from the Bhav chart. But we'll go to Bhav chart later. First we have to check the aspects from the Lagna chart. So who aspects Rahu? Saturn aspects. So Saturn is the Lord of... Uh, the 12th and the lagna and situated in the 11th house so the 11th house is somehow associated the 12th house is also associated uh, so there could be some struggles but the 11th house will give a lot of happiness then jupiter also aspects what about jupiter he is the 11th lord himself all right fantastic mind blowing out of the world then uh, rahu also gives results of the dispositor so who is his dispos uh, who is his dispositor it's mercury Okay, because he is in the sign of Mercury. So do not see the house here. You may think, oh, Rahu is in Bhav chart in the fourth house. So he's in Taurus. No, he's not in Taurus. He is in Gemini in uh, in the fourth house. But here, um, again, I mean, Bhav chart video will tell you why this is like this. Okay, I won't explain it again and again. So Rahu will give results of Mercury also. Don't think uh, Rahu is here too, so he'll give results of Venus. Okay, not like that. He'll give results of Mercury. Caution. So what about Mercury? Mercury is ruling which houses? Mercury is ruling the fifth house in the Bhav chart, if you check. Beautiful this is. Okay. And where is Mercury place? 11th house. Mind-blowing. Fantastic. So fantastic this is for marriage. All right. Mind-blowing this is. Now the 12th house is associated, so uh, there could be increase of expenses after marriage. But now let us go to the main principle. Let's add 25 years. So this person was born in 2020, so add 25 years. So this is 2045, okay. So 2045 or let's assume by that time marriages will be even late. So let's assume around 25 to 30, there are possibilities of marriage. So. He's, he will run Venus when he will be around 26 because that time uh, 2045 end he will be 26 around. So then Venus Dasha starts and then Sun Dasha is there another year. Okay, So Venus and Sun both are positive for marriage because they are indeed Venus is the natural significator of marriage and Sun is the lord of the seventh house. All right, So therefore uh, within these years, uh, from 26 to uh, around uh, how much? Around you know, 29 or almost 30. It's a great time for him to get married. Okay. So now, because the Mahadasha Lord Rahu is extremely positive for marriage, so uh, his marriage will be very good during this Dasha. Okay. This Moon Dasha can be a bit struggle because although Moon is in the seventh house. Uh, but uh, if you check, he is the sixth lord and he's also in Hasta Nakshatra, as we discussed earlier. Hasta as one of the difficult nakshatras for marriage. Okay. Uh, then, uh, then you check uh, more precisely different uh, placements. Then you check uh, Jupiter. Okay. Jupiter is the next planet. So, so if he gets married at, let's assume, uh, 2040, let's assume, you know, 2049, he gets married. Let's just assume. Uh, then uh, this is around th three years, two to three years. So then his Jupiter Dasha will start. And Jupiter is the natural significator of childbirth. Okay. So childbirth is seen by the second house, fifth house, and the ninth house, and the eleventh house. So, but what about his married life? Uh, so if you check the Bhav chart, Jupiter is in the 10th house, which is not a great house for marriage, okay, because this is the 12th from the 11th house. But he's also the 11th lord, so 11th lord in the 10th. Um, then what does this mean? This means that 
uh, now see the eleventh house is a very peculiar house. It speaks in the tone of the house where it joins. Okay, so the eleventh lord is in the tenth house now. No? So therefore, this will mean the person will be in a very big authority position. He will, he will be in the at the pinnacle of his career. His career will start to bloom and boom like anything. Uh, but the problem is uh, his focus will decrease in married life. Okay, but now we have to go down to the nakshatra level. Do not make judgments on basis of planets. So here Jupiter is in Purva Ashada nakshatra. Okay, Purva Ashada is ruled by Venus, and if you know. Um, here Venus is the fourth lord and the eighth lord in the bhav chart. Okay, so therefore something to do with property or legacy money or inheritance, these kind of things are there which he will be dealing. Okay, and uh, Jupiter is in Sagittarius, uh, therefore the awareness is very high. Okay, so do, do not get confused. He is not in Scorpio. He is in Sagittarius. Okay, in number nine, but it is in this tenth house. So uh, he will have a lot of awareness and uh, because it is Jupiter, he can move into this business, uh, so, sorry, the finance sector, okay. Uh, or some kind of consulting work can be done, but consulting is not very probable because, uh, uh, I mean, in this chart it is probable, you know, why? Because Venus uh, is also the lord of the third house because here Venus has two lordships, okay. So this happens sometimes in the bhav chart video I told you. So here Jupiter's Pisces Lordship has disappeared and Venus has got two Lordships. So Venus will give results of the 3rd, 4th and the 8th. Okay. And also the 12th house because he is placed there. So, uh, so the person may get opportunities to go abroad okay, uh, for fulfilling career ambitions. And, uh, uh, that could cause some uh, challenges in married life. Okay. So this is what Jupiter is telling. Uh, the focus in married life has decreased. Uh, the focus in career and property and insurance and inheritance and all this has increased. So the spouse may feel that this person is not uh, giving me much time. Okay. Uh, and traveling has increased. Okay. So married life may not be that great, but overall the life is good. Uh, no worries. No major worries. Then Saturn Mahadasha starts, okay. This will be like very prominent. So what about Saturn? Saturn is placed in the 11th house of the bhav chart, fantastic. Is the Lagna Lord and the 12th Lord, not bad. And uh, so housewise he is well placed. Again the 12th house is indicated, again the person might travel abroad and Lagna means the focus might shift to health. Uh, but we check the Nakshatra. So where is Saturn placed? He's in Uttara Shada, who is ruled by the sun. So married life will bloom like anything. Suddenly he will remember that he's married. <laughs> All right. So the 11th house is indicated and the 7th house is also indicated because uh, sun, the lord of Uttara Shada is the lord of the 7th house in the bhav chart. And he's himself in the 11th in the Chart. So this is stupendous. So suddenly focus on married life will increase and uh, the person will be very much focused towards marriage. Then Mercury Mahadasha starts. Okay. What about Mercury? Mercury is the lord of the um, fifth house in the bhav chart. So focus on children will improve in increase and fifth house also helps the marriage. So focus on married life will also increase and it's also in the 11th. Fantastic beautiful this is and uh, Virgo's lordship has disappeared here <laughs> so Mercury will be giving results of the 5th and the 11th only okay which is fantastic so thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up all right so suppose this person uh, came to you for consult so uh, when Mercury Mahadasha ends what will be the age of this person so the person will be quite of some age you know so it's like a lot of age till that time you know 80 84 years okay so we thought of 75 but we discussed till 85 so this is how you have to analyze the person you have to tell the person's married life you have to tell uh, that uh, so if you had the power to suggest what would you suggest i would suggest that because rahu mahadasha is good the person should try to get married in this venus antardasha okay because 
uh, then he can enjoy relatively three more years of good married life. Because if he marries in son, then only two years of good married life he will get. Okay, and initial years of the married life is very important. So at least if he marries somewhere around forty six, forty seven, then he will get around three to four years of good married life. Okay. Although Sun and Venus are both positive, but my suggestion would be that you try to get married during this time. Okay. And in the Navamsha, if you check, uh, Venus is also in the ninth house and it is uh, saying, uh, it, it is helping uh, marriage and uh, marriage ceremony. So, yeah, there are some afflictions. And if you see here, Venus is severely afflicted by Rahu, Mars, Saturn. All right. So this can create some challenges during this Venus Antar Dasha to get married. And the major challenge could have come in the Mahadasha. But Mahadasha is like uh, the person will be very old by that time. Okay. So um, this is how you see. So this problem of affliction of Venus can come only during Antar Dasha. Okay. So henceforth, it might be difficult to get married during this Dasha. But let's try and uh, let's see if the person can get married and venus is in shatta bhisha nakshatra which is ruled by rahu which is again as we saw very good for his married life all right so venus can give marriage but there could be some disappointments because of saturn some rahu element could be there some cheating could be there or somebody may say something and not do and mars shows some violence could be there. violence means you know some as in hindi they say tutu mame with somebody with some relative or somebody like this and Mars is in the 10th, so some career issue can come. You know, this Mahapurush Yoga is there. All right. And you have to tell the person that during these 16 years, you may not be that focused on your married life. You may be more focused on your career and doing something abroad. But the moment Saturn Mahadasa starts, everything will change. Okay. So then Saturn and Mercury are fantastic. So this is how you analyze your married life. I will stop the screen share. And uh, not just by seventh lord is bad, Venus is bad. This is not how you analyze marriage, all right? Thank you very much for your patience. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your marriage or career, you can go to my website below. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you shall find him. And if you're new, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up and share it with your friends. And I will put some videos on marriage here. All right. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.